Welcome to Zach's Tech Turf and weekly download episode number 13, which is my weekly tech and PC gaming news series. Today, I'm going to be playing some Forza Horizon 3 while I give you this news, and I'm sipping on some Wawa coffee because it's National Coffee Day and I got that for free. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section what you're sipping on. Let's get into it. Before getting into the PC gaming news, make sure you guys let me know what you think about the wheel camera. This is my first time doing it, but I'm really enjoying how it looks, but I need to know what you guys think. Okay, so for our first news, this is a big one that I'm pretty excited about. Destiny 2 is being rumored to be coming to PC. I know it's just a rumor, but when PC Gamer posts a page about it, it's gotta have a decent chance, right? Apparently Destiny 2 is quote, being internally communicated to employees, which doesn't mean much, but one can only hope. I've been dying to play an RPG-like first-person Halo-ish shooter on the PC and would love for this to be a reality. Next up, details on the Battlefield 1 Play First trial have been revealed for people that have an active EA Access or Origin Access subscription like myself. With this, you can play the game on October 13th without even purchasing the game. There will be 5 maps and 4 modes available as well as some campaign action in there. If you do decide to buy the game, all of your progress will certainly transform for over two. I'm definitely going to be trying this on October 13th. I have a little bit more Battlefield news for you guys. The 10 year old Battlefield 2142 sci-fi shooter is resurfacing. It's called Battlefield 2142 Revive and it's a fan made project that is now free and available to play. It's not official from EA but it seems that they might actually be cool with this idea and won't try to shut it down or anything. The original Battlefield 2142 isn't even playable at this point so from what I'm reading there are actually a decent amount of players playing this game. I think I'm going to try this one out when I get a spare chance. Moving along with even more first person shooter news, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 now has mod tools that are available from Steam. This concept is still in beta so don't expect anything to be polished, but if you own the full game, you can use mods through an unranked server or in custom lobbies. You can install this new mod tools from your Steam library under the tools section and it sounds pretty interesting. I still only have the multiplayer starter pack so I won't be purchasing the full game only a month away from Infinite Warfare, aka Modern Warfare Remastered, aka my favorite game release of 2016 behind Forza Horizon. Speaking of Steam, there is a new Steam UI update that seems pretty significant that is on the way. Valve wants to make Steam look even better by including bigger gaming art and pictures and reducing a little bit of clutter. The new UI will also let you filter out a lot of content that you aren't interested in, such as completely removing VR stuff from your homepage. A left column will also be added that includes links to new releases, top sellers, recently updated, upcoming releases, and others. This will give buyers an easier experience trying to find another game to buy that they probably will never play, like me. Ooh, I think I'll buy one right now. Finally, our last bit of PC gaming news is that the GOG Connect program added a few new games to the library in an attempt to dethrone Steam as the ultimate PC gaming portal. If you guys don't know, GOG is a DRM free inspired company that basically hates any and all DRM. With their program, if you purchase the game on Steam, you can exchange it on GOG for a DRM free copy. They seem to release more and more games all the time, so if for some reason you're sick of Steam, this may be something you're interested in. I personally wish that just everyone would sell their games on Steam so I can keep all of my games in one place and be able to track how many precious real life hours I have in the video games. Alright, let's transition to some tech news. Not to start off negatively, but I want to quickly talk about the new world's biggest hack that went down at Yahoo. Yahoo reported this week that at least 500 million, aka half a billion user accounts have been hacked. This is by far the biggest hack in the world, and the user account data surfaced on the underground black market of hacking. That's right, people are stealing possibly your Yahoo login information. Even if you don't use Yahoo anymore, chances are that your password might might be the same as an actual important account that you own, so you may want to change some of your passwords from 123456 or QWERTY. Moving on to better news, actually great news, Razer has released a new version of their extremely popular mouse, the Death Adder, and they are calling it the Death Adder Elite. Makes sense, right? The Death Adder was released all the way back in 2006 if you can believe it. The mouse was very simple and didn't have any crazy features or anything, it just worked flawlessly, which is ultimately what it comes down to, especially in eSport gaming. 
Upgrades to this mouse include a new 5G optical sensor which is apparently the world's best with a max DPI of 16,000 and a tracking speed of 450 inches per second. Also the new Razer mechanical mouse switches are being implemented. I don't know about you, but I love my mechanical keyboard. Check out my review by the way of the Corsair K70 if you haven't already, but a mechanical mouse seems even more baller. If you were waiting for October 4th to hear about Google's new 4K Chromecast release, wait no longer. The new 4K Chromecast was leaked about a week ahead of the event. Sources are now confirming that it will be called the Chromecast Ultra and it will cost $69 and stream in 4K. I'm interested to see how many of my viewers that are still listening to me ramble on actually have a 4K TV. I still don't, but I try to drop hints to my wife on a weekly basis that we need one. Let me know in the comment section if you guys are rocking one. Staying in the same tech-related family, Roku is ditching their entire line of products and transitioning to a new 5-device lineup. The cheapest one will now be called the Roku Express for 30 bucks, and will go all the way up to the Chromecast <coughs> I mean Roku Ultra, which will include 4K and HDR support. Roku says that the Premier and Ultra models will be roughly as good as last year's Roku 4, but will be in a box 40% smaller. Finally, you guys know that I sometimes like to add in cool military news, so I'll add this bit. If you thought drones were the future of tech, you were wrong. It's actually robot fish. The Navy is currently conducting research on robot fish that act like surveillance drones, but underwater. This technology is seriously years and years away from actually being implemented, but you heard it here first at Zach's Tech Turf. I'm gonna try and buy one of these in the future. Real quickly before ending this video, let me introduce the sponsor of this video, Technic Share, which is a company of social media experts. For the past few months, they have helped my social media grow so much and they can help you too. Their info is down in the description. Well, that wraps up weekly download episode number 13. Also, as requested, I think I'm gonna have an extra video upload this week, so make sure you're subscribed to stay up to date. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.